Hey, you! Yeah, you! No. Do you want to learn how to program Android apps? Hey. Well then, keep watching. Hi there, Adam here. Today we're going to set up the Eclipse IDE, that's Integrated Development Environment, and we're going to set up the Android SDK, that Software Development Kit. Now there's a lot of different ways that we can do this, and there's automated installers out there, but we're going to do this manually, and using these techniques, the same techniques will work on Windows, Linux, and Mac. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is go to Eclipse.org and get the Eclipse IDE. You'll want to pick the classic version. So once on Eclipse.org, you click the Downloads button and then download Eclipse Classic. And now we'll head over to Android.com and if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see they have a link called Developers. Now on the main page, they have a link for downloads. You'll want to select your proper operating system type. So now our files have downloaded. That was quick. The first thing we need to do is set up Eclipse IDE. So we'll open it up. Now I personally keep all of my stuff in a code folder. I recommend you do the same because it keeps things organized. And so that was it. We can set up quite a bit more on Eclipse and make it uh, auto launch and all of that, but for the purposes of this, we can just open up the Eclipse folder in our code folder and just launch the Eclipse binary, like so. Change your workspace to your code folder. And if everything downloaded properly, you should have it working. We'll close that out for now. So now let's open up the Android SDK. And we'll do the same and extract that. Open up the Android SDK folder. Next, click Tools, and then Android. And you'll want to run that. Now we need to download a version of the SDK. Now because Android 2.3 is the most popular, I'm going to select that one. Now you click Install, Accept All, and Install Again except any pop-ups that may come up. Now a word about platform versioning. Although I'm running Ice Cream Sandwich on my Captivate here, uh, most people are still running 2.3, so if you run a higher OS API level than what most people run, you're going to exclude most people. So now that we've downloaded the SDK, let's open the Eclipse folder. So we'll go back to our code folder, open up Eclipse, and open up the application. In the Eclipse IDE, we'll hit the Help menu option and click on Install New Software. And up here at the top, we'll type HTTPS colon slash slash DL dash SSL dot Google dot com slash Android slash Eclipse and then we'll click the add button give it a name I'm going to call it Android SDK 
Now we'll select the package to be downloaded, and then we'll click the next button, which is down at the bottom of the screen. Click next again, and I accept the terms of these license agreements. At this point, we're just about ready to start building an application, but first we want to verify a few things. So the first thing we do is we go to Project, Properties, and then we'll click Android Lint Preferences. Click on the Configure Workspace Settings, and then click Android. If your SDK location is not the same as the one that you deployed to, then we'll want to change that. So, we'll go to our code folder and select the Android SDK. Click OK, Apply, and OK. Now, if you're not seeing the Android option in Eclipse, you've done something wrong. You need to go back and correct that. So let's go ahead and start up a new Android project. The first thing we need to do is press the New button. Then we'll scroll on down and hit Android Project. Then click Next. Now this project name will be XDA SDK. And we'll hit Enter. Now we want to target a platform that a lot of users can use, so we'll check Android 2.3.3. Now for a package name, you want to pick a descriptive name. The name should always be traceable back to your website. We'll go with com.xdatv.xdasdk. And we can hit finish now. So let's go ahead and expand these folders. Here in the XDA SDK project, we have a source folder, and that's where all of our source code is kept. We have a gen folder. The gen folder is where automatically Java generated files are kept. You won't need to use this folder too much. Android 2.3.3 and Android dependencies contain the Android stuff that actually makes an Android app into an Android app. The assets folder is where you keep things that you want to have as an asset to your folder, uh, to your application. Say you want to deploy a file, you put it in your assets folder. The bin folder is where binaries are generated for the project. And then finally we have the res folder. The res folder is where all of our icons are kept. Where our strings are kept for porting to different languages. And it's also where our main layout is. Now you may know that Android applications, their windows are called views. So what we're looking at here is a default Android view. To customize it, we can drag and drop components. And now our project has a button. Or we can double click it and edit the XML file that controls all the properties of this button. To switch between the XML and the graphical layout, there are tabs at the bottom of this window. Before we run this application to test it, let's change the text. The way we do that is we'll click on this tab over here, Values, and we'll open up Strings. And here we can see all of our different strings that are used in the program. The reason for this is different languages are easily ported over if we just use strings in a separate XML file. So now that we've set everything up, we should be able to just connect right up to our Android device and load an application onto it. So make sure that your device is in debug mode first, development mode that is. and click the play button. Then OK. If all goes well, the application should just load right up on the Android device. 
So there we have it. One Android application that doesn't do much of anything yet. We'll get into programming that button in the next episode. Now it's my goal that these episodes be short, sweet, to the point, and as entertaining as possible. Now here at XDA, this is the kind of thing our users deal with on a daily basis. So if you have a problem, feel free to ask in the forums. But that's all for this episode. We're well on our way on getting started on programming the ADK for Android. Don't forget to add me to your circles on Google+, and you can find me in the forums. I'm Adam Outler for XDA TV.